Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to RBL Bank's Q2 FY23 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. R. Subramanya Kumar, Managing Director and CEO, RBL Bank. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Kumar. Thank you very much. Greetings to all of you on this Diwali Eve. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us for the discussion on RBL Bank's financial results for the second quarter of FY23. I am joined on this call by Mr. Rajiv Ahuja, Executive Director of the bank, and other members of our management team, who along with me will address any questions that you have. Briefly on our results for the quarter. First, on asset quality. Our GNPA was lower quarter on quarter at 3.80, with net NPA at 1.26%, and a provision coverage ratio of 67.8%. We had a total slippage of 812 crores for this quarter. Our total overall recoveries and upgrades was 314 crores, our net slippages were therefore at 98 crores. Of the slippages, 279 crore pertain to the slippages from the restructuring book, where we have already substantially taken the provisions in the past. So the need for additional provisioning was reduced. In the case of slippages from microfinance restructured, you will recall we had identified the customers where we saw potential stress and made additional provisions in the March quarter. One account in the wholesale bank's restructured book was classified as an NPA in this quarter on a technical ground. However, this account continues to service its obligation. In credit cards, our slippages were 245 crores this quarter, marginally higher than the previous quarter. Our recoveries and upgrade continue to be a strong in this segment, so the net slippages are 194 crores. The card is now tracking to 4 to 4.5% credit cost, which would be better than the pre-COVID levels. Our slippages in other retail was 221 crores, of which 66 crores pertain to the impact of out-of-order circular of Reserve Bank of India. As in the previous quarters, these upgrades, these get upgraded in the subsequent quarter. The net slippages in the retail were 65 crores because of upgrades. Our net restructured advances stood at 1.87%, down from 2.35% in Q1 FI23. We'll talk about the provisions. We took a total provisions and advances as NPA, restructured, and standard asset provisions of 296 crore in this quarter, as against 329 crores last quarter. We had recoveries from return of account of, of the amount of 70 crores. The net provision on advances, therefore, was lower at 226 crore as against 249 crore in the last quarter. The credit costs for the quarter were 39 bits and 82 bits for the half year as against 374 bits for H1 FY22. We have also given you a detailed breakup on provisioning in slides 20 to 22 of our presentation. Our PCR stood at 67.8 as against 72.5% last quarter. Briefly on advances, our growth journey has resumed with an overall advanced growth of 4% Q on Q and 12% YOY. Our disbursals in retail were approximately 2,800 crore this quarter, and we expect our disbursal run rate to continue to grow in the coming quarters. As a result, this quarter, retail advances grew 6% YOY and 7% sequentially. The wholesale advances grew 20% YOY and 2% sequentially. Retail to wholesale advance mix stood at 52 and 48 respectively. Within retail, cards grew by 17% YOY, microfinance by 8% lower YOY, 
but showed a strong growth of 22% sequentially. We have moved, we have moved away from stagnation in this business to steadily accelerating the growth. Home loans grew 123% worldwide to 3,450 crores and tractor loans on a lower base by over 474% worldwide to 540 crores. In microfinance, our book originated from 2021 onwards till now, accounts for 87% of our microfinance advances which have an NPA at less than 0.5% in this book, indicating that the stress in the book is broadly mirroring the pre-COVID levels. In credit cards, we added 5.2 lakh cards this quarter. Our spends per card is also growing well with an increase of 8% overwide. As I mentioned earlier, the credit cards in this, year, in this also now trending lower than the pre-COVID levels. Coming to deposits and liquidity. Summarizing the quarter, total deposits grew 5% worldwide, the CASA deposit growing 7% worldwide, and retail and small business deposit growing 4% worldwide and 4% sequentially. CASA ratio was 36.2%, and retail and small business deposit ratio as defined under LCR was 41.3% as of September 2022, as against 39.7% last quarter, quarter end. Our liquidity levels continue to remain high with the coverage, with the average LCR at 156% for the quarter. Our cost of deposit was 5.14% for, for the quarter. Our focus continues to, continues to be to grow granular small ticket deposits, while our overall deposit numbers will not increase given the headroom in our credit deposit ratio and our surplus liquidity, both of which will be absorbed naturally by the credit growth in the coming quarters. We will keep increasing the share of retail deposits in the overall mix. So we expect to see the, the proportion of retail deposit as defined under LCR in total deposits to accrete at 5 to 6% every year on capital. Our total capital was 17.4% and our CET1 ratio was 15.9% as at September end, as again 17.5 and 16 as at June end briefly on other aspects of our operating performance. YOY NII grew 16% and 4% sequentially to 1064 crores, 1064 crores. Our NIMS this quarter was 4.5%, 40 bits higher YOY and 10 bits higher sequentially. Other income was at 583 crores for this quarter, lower marginally by 2% YOY. The core fee income, however, grew 7% worldwide and 2% sequentially to 544 crores. Total revenue at 1,648 crores for the quarter was flat sequentially and 9% higher than last year. Our OPEX this quarter was 1135 crores, <coughs> sequentially just growing at 2% only. The PPOM this quarter was at 512 crores and profit after tax was 202 crores for the quarter, the flat sequentially. Our profit for H1 FY23 is 403 crores, as against the loss of 429 crores for H1 FY22. I want to touch upon some of our new initiatives which we have finalized in the last few months. I had briefly spoken in the last call of our plans on to focus in the areas of rural vehicles, two-wheelers, and used cars, housing, and small business lending, and other retail products to build a new niche. I am happy to report that our new forays into two-wheeler, used cars, and gold loans would be ready to launch in this quarter. At the same time, our scale-up in the existing the nascent businesses of housing and tractor loans is building traction as well. Our overall plan is to increase the share of these loans to 20% plus of the overall advances mix in next to two to three years, while maintaining the growth in our existing verticals of credit card and microfinance. The outcome of these product launches is to provide greater predictability of the earnings while contributing an increasing share of the overall advances by financial year 25 end, therefore creating a solid base for the scale up in the next planning cycle. 
leveraging the bank's presence in tier 2 to tier 6 locations through the bank's branches and RBL FinServe branches to acquire and service customers and on ground monitoring. The creating right to win through efficient use of technology and processes. For example, we launched our rural vehicle business in tough conditions during the COVID phase, and we built a different model by digitizing the entire process end to end. And that is the same operating model we are using to build both in two wheelers and used cars. Provide the points of distribution with additional products to aid the customer acquisition, retention for creating an engaged customer base. Our main goal, born out of our past learning, is to address through our new initiatives greater operating leverage for customer acquisition, engagement, and service. In the past, our bank has not effectively cost leveraged our various business segments, leading to low penetration of multiple products to the large customer base that we have. Our approach is to drive assets to liability customers and vice versa. While we are certainly not the first bank to talk about this, our primary goal is to do a better job at bridging this gap to create a sustainable operating leverage. On an overall basis, therefore, we will look to grow our advances as 15% this fiscal and at approximately 20% plus over the medium term basis. We will look to fund most of these advances, most of the advances growth through granular deposit growth, which means that our target would be to grow the granular deposit at a similar rate. On our income and expenses, given the growth in our business is now back on track, we expect to see improving income levels in the coming quarters. On the other hand, our expenses base and therefore our operating profit has been affected by the expenses we have incurred and are incurring in the branch expansion and related employee additions, technology refresh across the bank, cost of new businesses set up, etc. We fully appreciate that there has been a concern in your minds on our OPEX levels. Outside of our new business, where we are making investments, we are looking at every line of cost and running cost optimization projects to focus on reaping greater benefits from the expense base. You would have noticed we were able to contain the growth of the OPEX cost and it is at 2% level sequentially. The benefits of this would start showing up with a lag from Q4, this physical, with an improvement quarter on quarter thereafter. I will end my speech by reiterating some of the key points. Having spent the last four months in the bank, I can confidently say that the balance sheet is strong and there will be more predictable growth from here on. You can observe that H1 FY23 has demonstrated higher profitability and lower provisions as compared to H1 FY22. The strength, capacity, and the capability in the bank will ensure steady rhythm of sensible profitable growth. The business engines, more specifically within the retail, have started their growth journey again. A return to the growth in our existing businesses, including corporate, where we see opportunities, and this will lead to top-line growth. And as a new business start and grow, we should see consistent uptick in income levels. There has been some concern in employee morale and therefore the attrition. I'm happy to say that the team is intact, motivated, and we have also addressed some gaps with some key hires. You would have also seen the new additions to our board to add our strength and expertise. Growth in advances should be 15% for the full year this fiscal and higher thereafter. And at the same time, our granular deposit growth will be similar to the similar or higher as we granularize deposits. Capital position continues to be robust, giving us a sufficient runway for growth. And stop here, and with this, we will now take the questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Kunal Shah from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. 
ഹായ് സാർ വിഷു ആർ വെരി ഹാപ്പി ദിവാലി സോ ഫസ്റ്റ്ലി ഓൺ ദി റീസ്ട്രക്ചർഡ് അഡ്വാൻസസ് സോ ഇൻഫാക്ട് ഫ്രോം ഓൾമോസ്റ്റ് സെവൻറ്റീൻ ഹൺഡ്രഡ് തേർട്ടി ഓർഡ് ക്രോഡ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ഡൗൺ ടു ഫോർട്ടീൻ ഹൺഡ്രഡ് ഓർഡ് ക്രോഡ് ബട്ട് വി ആർ സീങ് ദറ്റ് മേ ബി വാട്ട് എവർ ഹാസ് ബിൻ ദി ഡെൽറ്റ ഇൻ ദിസ് ക്വാർട്ടർ സിഗ്നിഫിക്കൻറ്റ് പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ഇറ്റ് ഹാസ് സ്ലിപ്റ്റ് ഇൻ ടു എൻ പി എൽ ഓക്കെ സോ ഓൾമോസ്റ്റ് ലൈക് ടു എയ്റ്റി ഓർഡ് ക്രോഡ്സ് ഓഫ് ദി റിഡക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ത്രീ ഫോർട്ടി ഓർഡ് ക്രോഡ്സ് ഹാവ് സ്ലിപ്റ്റ് ഇൻ ടു എൻ പി എൽ സോ നൗ ലുക്കിംഗ് അറ്റ് ഓവർ ഓൾ ബുക്ക് ആൻഡ് വാട്ട് ഓൺ എ നെറ്റ് ബേസിസ് വിച്ച് വി ആർ കെറിങ് ഓർഡ്സ് എ പ്രൊവിഷനിങ് അഗെയിൻസ്റ്റ് ഇറ്റ് do we think that uh, there is an adequate provisioning or uh, given that uh, in first half significant amount has slipped maybe there would be a higher requirement of provisioning on the restructured pool see uh, with regard to the slippage on the restructured book i want to divide in two part the one set is from your microfinance book which has been restructured the second is the restructured book of the wholesale one big account which has slipped from restructured yeah. book in the corporate is purely on technical ground and this account is performing or all the repayments are coming in tact so there is no need for additional provisions as far as this particular book is concerned with regard to that other remaining book i will ask jaydi to give the numbers and uh, you'll be able to answer. yeah so kunal uh, uh, restructuring uh, as mr kumar said uh, you know the, the main uh, item that we were uh, anticipating was in microfinance which we had taken adequate provisioning <laughs> and that is uh, kind of slipped now going forward i think we have some tail left but again since we have a healthy provisioning on that we don't expect that to uh, make a dent in the uh, in the credit costs uh, going forward uh, and and uh, one technical so the reduction therefore in restructured book is partly due to slippages partly recoveries uh, but skewed in favor of uh, slippages because of the one single wholesale account yeah so when we look at business loans of 1060 odd crores in restructured on which there is 130 odd crores of provisioning and even credit cards okay when we look at it 130 odd crores of portfolio with hardly like 14% uh, 14 crores of provisioning on that pool so does that seem sufficient or maybe we will see that coming through uh, uh, over next couple of quarters yeah yeah so retail because assets, credit card i think maybe it, that can really slip into npa yeah 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 i will answer that uh, on retail assets uh, kunal the uh, this is lap and therefore secured so we really don't uh, expect an lgd issue here even if there are slippages in general our expectations are 8 to 10% of slippages from the restructured book over the next 2 uh, to 3 quarters as and when the morat comes out on re- uh, credit cards uh, this restructuring is a technical restructuring which is more than a year old so uh, honestly there is nothing to it uh, if you look at the slippages from these cards they are negligible they are in line with our non restructured book this was a technical restructuring which happened almost a year back so uh, it has been perfectly performing there is no morat on this book for over the last 12 months sure got it and one last question in terms of the advanced growth uh, so we are highlighting it will be 15 odd percent kind of a growth and then uh, in the future years almost 20 or percent so garnering deposits is going to be very critical and this time also it's almost uh, flat so at what spread would we would be doing the incremental business and what kind of impact it can have on margins given that focus will also be in terms of getting the granular deposits uh, see the first uh, with regard to the deposit i mean advances growth it is going to be at the mature range so today we have the yield in the range of 21% in our credit card and around 17 18% in our uh, microfinance the retail growth which we are looking at is going to be secured number one second it will be in the range of uh, 11 to 14% range which will be filling up our yield so it is better return than what we have been getting it from our uh, had we grown our wholesale book the second with regard to the deposit mobilization for that as i said clearly that we are moving away from the bulk deposit and you would have seen that lcr has grown by 7% sequentially which was uh, earlier was not going so the granular deposit and the casa is going to be the focus one if you look at that uh, we were we are able to clock uh, the granular deposit at 41.3% within the overall 80000 crore what we have we have an ability to grow that segment from what it is we will be clock, we will be reaching around 44% the idea is that today we have a surplus liquidity of somewhere around 7000 crores right so that uh, with uh, with our intent to reach uh, retain our lcr at 120% the 7000 crores can be deployed even today with the current level of the deposit only there is no compulsion to grow the deposit 
as we move forward, our ability to collect the deposit is coming from the two factors. One, we have not leveraged our 800 plus branches of our FinServe, which is now eligible to collect our liability franchise also, which we haven't done so far. The second were 507 branches which are operating today have an ability to increase their account. One, one thing I can say with confidence is that number of accounts which we mobilized and that uh, lead segment, that the insignia, signature, and those segments maintaining an average balance of around uh, 5 to 7 lakhs um, is doubled in last one year. So we will be in a position to start improving our granular deposit from the current level of 36.2% with the CASA to around 38% by the end of this year and granular deposit from 41.3 to 44, which will trigger the CASA growth from the current level of 7% into the low part of around 12% or 13% of the CASA, which will add up to our deposit to meet our current level of growth work we are planning it. And this will consistently move in the next year also. Okay, okay, got it, yeah. Thank you, thank you and all the best, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Kunal, thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Matthew John, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, I just want to check out uh, with respect to the uh, uh, communication from, is there any communication from RBI with respect to continuation of uh, the RBI nominee, Yogesh Dayal, in the board, given the uh, continuous uh, good performance of the bank for the last three, four quarters? Um, normally, these kind of communications are not written because uh, it was appointed by RBI and they will take a decision with regard to his continuation otherwise. Otherwise, he is there for two years as to the terms of appointment. We don't uh, get into that community. Yeah. We, we do not want to speculate as well. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anand Dama from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, uh, uh, the slippage that we saw during the current quarter, you said that one of the corporate accounts has slipped uh, uh, on technical basis. So can you provide some more details? And uh, uh, now that we have had uh, spent good amount of time, uh, so any analysis of our overall corporate book, double B and below, uh, any incremental stress that we see over there? See, I, I just made a statement in my opening remark that the balance sheet of the bank is strong. That statement I make after analyzing the balance, balance sheet, which includes the wholesale book, retail book, and microfinance and credit card. So I said very clearly that the credit card continues to be the credit cost of somewhere around 4 to 4.5 percent. And I also said that the incremental increase which you have seen in microfinance has seen the slippage of only 0.5 percent, which is, I, I would rather say, that far better than the performance which has been doing it earlier. So one thing we have done it is in all the retail and other things, we have uh, strengthened our collection mechanism so it doesn't give me any. Uh, Shocker or to the, or it doesn't give any concern. For retail, which is today at 52 percent, it just uh, market accepting for the restructured book, which we said that uh, clearly this is one where if at all there is a concern comes, it is going to come from the restructured book. However, the restructured book is fairly well provisioned; it may not be creating much concern. It's been moving forward. And one thing is that from the return of account, we also stated that around 70 crores has been recovered, which gives a comfort that these accounts, even if it slips, we have an ability to collect them. With regard to the lab, which is a retail, even if it slips, we have all the <coughs> restructure now. Even if it is slip, it is going to be secured. The ability to recover is definitely higher than what it is. Now, coming to that 48% uh, of the wholesale book, which has a commercial as well as uh, see, on our accepting for the natural phenomena which is going to happen, we don't envisage anything, which is uh, which demonstrated with our GNPA reduction in the last four quarters, that GNPA reduction will continue from what you have been seeing it in future as well. Hope it addresses your concern. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically, sir, we also had a uh, you know old NPS uh, like CCD and all. Uh, so, any any uh, hope of resolution in the near term that 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 you have? What is that? Come again. So we had a lot of these old stress accounts like you know CCD and some other large accounts were there. Uh, so any resolution over there that is expected? See, CCD recovery is happening. It was around 200 plus code. It has come down to 70 plus if I remember as a group. Um, Freud, you know pretty well that the one which is going on in NCT, we don't have anything else. I, I think, Aran, just to be clear, the recoveries are happening. Uh, and I think uh, they, they will continue happening over the next few quarters. Obviously, a lot of them are 
structured around you know interbank agreements or somewhere NCLC or private uh, transactions. But I think that effort is already on, and some of that is already reflected in our. Uh, net credit costs over the last couple of quarters. Yeah, in fact, uh, Kunal, wholesale, for example, has been running negative credit costs for the last two quarters. Okay, sure, sure. And lastly, anything on OPEX that uh, are we largely done with the OPEX uh, that we have seen, or uh, the OPEX uh, should remain elevated for next two quarters as well? You make a comparison of the OPEX for the sequentially, we have grown only by 2%. That uh, kind of control will continue. Okay, sure, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shubhranshu Mishra from Philip Kaplan. Please go ahead. Hello. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for the opportunity and happy Diwali to the entire team. Uh, on the credit card piece, sir, I just wanted to understand uh, uh, what is the split between Bajaj Finance and uh, uh, other sourcing, both in terms of SIF as well as in terms of acquisition? And also, uh, what could be the ROA on a steady state basis for each of these uh, portfolios? And my third question is, uh, what is the uh, total payout that we do to Bajaj Finance on an annual run rate basis? And what are, what would be the various components of these? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yes. With regard to the first one, run, run rate, I will ask uh, Vikram, who is just heading that credit card. With regard to that uh, BFL and other things, we will increase it. Yes, if you want to add something. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll take that. Uh, basically, on a book basis, we are roughly 55-45. On the incremental sourcing basis, we are approximately 70-30, 75-25, depending on how the other partners uh, source in a particular quarter. So that's the run rate. And this run rate will start moving towards back towards 50-50 over, uh, over the medium term as our other partners continue to uh, gain traction. Uh, the ROAs, uh, steady state ROAs we would expect in this business uh, uh, at an overall cards level should be in the range of uh, 4 to 4.5% 4 uh, when it is fully leveraged and the credit costs are, uh, let's say, as, as per the model credit cost. Uh, and that is true for whether it is a Bajaj Finance uh, portfolio or some other partner portfolio, depending on the maturity of the partnership, uh, it, it, it hovers in that range. Uh, I don't think we can comment on specific line items on uh, on how we pay Bajaj. Uh, largely, it is uh, related to sourcing and some performance of the cards. For example, we do have some spend share. Uh, so the better uh, the customer spends, we do uh, give uh, a share of that to Bajaj because they also continue to incentivize customer spend through their network of stores and stuff like that. Uh, but I would not want to get into details on that because that's a private partnership. <coughs> So just to, uh, to confirm, uh, my own calculation is uh, uh, we uh, roughly uh, do around 550 to 600 CR kind of a run rate. Is it closer to that? Sir? As I said, I would not want to comment on that. Right, sir. Sure. Thank you. Happy Diwali and happy Diwali. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Himanshu Taluja from Aditya Birla Sun Life Asset Management. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Just a few questions at my end. Firstly, on your basically, since you are guiding for a loan growth of 15% for this year, financial year, but if I look at my deposit growth for the last two quarters has been on a flat. So what is the deposit strategy here? Uh, 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 and uh, what is the deposit and what sort of growth that you expect basically to garner on the deposit fund? That's my first question. I have already explained earlier. Anyway, for your sake, I'm telling you, we are going granular deposit. Our LCR is of 41.3 percent, which will become 44.46 percent. And today we have a surplus liquidity of somewhere around 7,000 crores, which is sufficient for us to clock around 15 percent growth. What we are talking about. Therefore, the need we will be in a we are capable of raising the deposit as and when it is needed arises. We will be able to manage it. Okay, sure. And just secondly, on this asset quality front, uh, since by when uh, we are seeing the progression on the improvement on the slippages quarter on quarter that's coming down, but when we think that the complete normalization in the asset quality will end, uh, we are going to see the earning normalization also begins basically. So if I can have a... Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. In terms of credit costs, we are already uh, actually below normal uh, this year. In terms of slippages, I think because of the restructuring noise, I think that... Uh, uh, probably will, uh, uh, you know, normalize by, I think, Q4 or early Q uh, next year. 
but because we have taken a lot of provisioning on restructure, the credit cost impact is uh, is not there because of those slippages. Okay. Okay, sure. And uh, sir, uh, also on your earnings, by, by what do you expect? Uh, any ROA guidance that you wanted to convey, basically? We said last quarter also we continue to maintain it. For this year, exit will be somewhere around 0.8%. So one, one. 0.9 to 1. Point 0.9 to point, I mean, uh, 0.94 or whatever it is. 1% one, one you can take it for the exit of this year. Sure, sir. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saurav from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Just two questions. One is, uh, can you give some color on this incremental sourcing you're doing in uh, micro uh, micro banking? I mean, the book has gone up 20%, 22% quarter on quarter. So that's first. And second is on this main uh, quarter on quarter. So as you say, this is just largely bad for pricing. There is no mixed improvement you have seen per se. Uh, in the QOQ name improvement. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I think the, uh, on the first one, if you remember, we had uh, hardly any sourcing in Q1 because of uh, RBI guidelines which came in and it, it took most of the industry players, including us, to uh, change the rule engines and technology to, uh, to fall in line. And therefore, uh, obviously, that fell in line by late June, early July. And therefore, we've had a uh, fairly good uh, uh, sourcing for this uh, quarter, and I I that, yeah, and I think that trend will continue and probably even improve mm -hmm. going forward. Our expectation is that we should get back to a book size of where we were in March 21, uh, sorry, March 22, which was uh, around 7,000 plus crores. So March, March 21, 21, sorry, March, March 21, 21 we were 7, 7,100, we'll reach that we by end there of by somewhere around that by end of this year. Uh, sorry, your second second question, we couldn't get it. What is that? Um, uh, the main improvement, which is quarter on quarter, what we're seeing, this is just the back book repricing. There would not have been a core spread improvement in the book on incremental disbursement. Actually, it's a mix of both because what happens is that uh, the uh, repo rate linked book has rapidly repriced up. Even the wholesale book reprises up quite quickly, whereas uh, deposits uh, are a little back ended. Uh, so it's a mix of both. Uh, and I think now we will have a little bit of catch up from uh, deposits. Uh, and therefore, going forward, mixed improvement will play a bigger role in uh, in what we estimate that margin should continue to improve. Okay, so the incremental business which is being generated at our uh, at the bank is higher than the current name. Yes, that, yes. that is correct. That is correct. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pankaj Agarwal from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hello, sir. Uh, am I audible? Nice. Yes. So, so you said that your ROA in credit card business is roughly 5% and if credit card business is roughly 22-23% of your book, uh, you should be roughly making 90 to 100 basis point ROA from credit cards alone. Now your blended ROA is even less than that. So how, how do we reconcile these two numbers? So, Pankaj, two things. Uh, sorry, I should have clarified. Four and a half percent is CDD ROA. Second, the denominator for that is the loan book. Uh, if you have to look at the balance sheet, uh, which is what you are looking at when you look at the overall ROA, you need to deplete it by treasury assets, which don't have much ROAs. So, that is about a third or about 30 percent higher. So, if you deplete that, uh, you will be able to compare it with the bank. We, yes, we do have businesses where we are investing. Uh, for example, retail assets, uh, we are continuing to invest, so it will not necessarily be making money. Similarly, branch banking, where we are continuing to add branches. So there will be areas where we are continuing to invest. In. So, uh, and there will be businesses like wholesale, which is now come back to profitability after the provision issue that we saw two years back. So you have several uh, parts of the businesses sometimes some uh, is uh, doing very well versus others. But sir, if, if you like uh, gross up this credit card loan book with your, uh, you know, because you, you also have CRR SLR requirement, right, which is similar to other businesses, and if you make it post it, what should be the uh, ROA, I mean, comparable ROA which you report on overall, overall assets? So that should be down to somewhere in the two and a half to three range. Okay. 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 Thank you, sir. Uh, this is helpful. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rishikesh Hoja from Brobo Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. So, firstly, can you provide any guidance on cost to income ratio going ahead? See, today the cost to income ratio is somewhere in the mid range of 60 65, and uh, this is continued to be retained in that range for another two quarters because we're investing in our branches and we'll be investing in our employee, we'll be investing in the technology also. So going forward, it will it will it will stabilize and start looking down uh, from mid of next year. By end of FY24, you will be able to see them in the range of around 60 percent. Then the efforts will be on to bring it down to 54 the year year thereafter. Okay. And can you please indicate on uh, credit cost what credit costs are we seeing for uh, H2 and uh, next year FY24? So we are sticking to our guidance of uh, give or take 2%, less than 2% uh, for this year. We haven't given specific guidance for next year. Okay. Okay. And out of your uh, uh, slippages for this quarter, gross slippage is in the 812 crores. How much is from uh, restructured book? Uh, it's, 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 it's Around uh, 280 crores. Uh, 280 crores, 279. Okay. So that is gross, right? Correct, yeah. question is from the line of Rakesh Kumar from Systematic Shares. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks a lot, sir. Uh, so, please, yeah. you know, as, we, like, as the bank is going under, you know, transitory phase, so just to get a, your, uh, you know, your view that in how much time uh, do we see that, you know, credit composition uh, would normalize? Uh, huh? The credit composition even now is normalized. There is no abnormality as far as the credit composition is concerned. The composition will undergo a change as we move forward in our line with uh, more of a retail. And uh, I said that in by end of 25, we'll be around uh, in the 60, 65 range will be the retail book and the remaining the 35, 40 will be the range of uh, wholesale book. And within the wholesale book, there will be a credit composition will move away from the bulk deposit commercial van where the our yield will be slightly better than that of our investment in the corporate book. In retail book, there is going to be a credit card which will continue to grow as it has been growing hither too. And in, uh, in microfinance, it will continue to grow the way we have been doing it. At the end, if you see it, we may have the end of the balance sheet with 10% uh, of the microfinance, 25% of the credit card, and 25% of all other secure retail accounts remaining in the corporate book. Approximately around this, uh, what the composition has to move forward. So, as per your calculation, uh, entire you know change would take at least maybe around a year or so uh, this is a continuous one today we have 21 percent in this balance sheet book of 21 percent is in the retail segment what we have and we have around 23 percent is uh, in credit card and around 7 to 67 percent microfinance that that will keep on increasing it depending on uh, um, uh, i mean as you move for the total growth if the total growth is 20 percent this will also be growing the run rate of the secure retail will be higher than the run rate of other others Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Krishna and ASV from HDSC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Many thanks. Um, I hope I'm audible. I just had a couple of things. Uh, uh, one on the deposit strategy. I'm sorry. I'm getting you to repeat this. I know what you mentioned about you know improving your uh, your retail deposit mix from 41 to whatever number that you want to take it. But how do you intend to take it? If you could just articulate that a little bit, number yeah. one. Number two, does the RBI have any view on uh, how far you can take your unsecured mix, both credit card plus MFI together? So today you are at about 30%. Is this inelastic one way, or does the RBI typically advise banks on how how they want your asset mix to move move over a period of time? Yeah, coming to the second part of it, normally there will not be a prescription will not be given. There will be a model, business model will be undertaken by us. As for the business model which has been decided and which we have earlier communicated, we are strengthening it with our revised model today is that we will be increasing our secured portion in the retail to the top whatever the number to 25%. Overall, the retail, I mean, the secured portion is going to be somewhere around 50 50%. Yeah, within 50%. Yeah. Uh, secured will be about 50-50. Yeah. yeah, secured, to, to today, 
the secured is little lesser and we will be touching around 50 to 50 percent will be the secured. This is the plan which we have drawn for the next three years by exit of FI25. Uh, we will be discussing, we will be engaging with our SSM is the one who is sitting here and we will be looking at it and I don't think that uh, beyond that they don't give any prescription. First point coming to our, uh, the how we are going to grow the deposit, first is our branch where we are going to introduce the asset product which we have not been marketing or sales through the branches. You also will definitely appreciate that the asset leads to a lot of liability growth. So when the asset is going to be positioned, all the retail products, what we have been talking about, which we will be launching in this quarter, as well as next quarter, will all be made available through the branches. And that is the one source where we will be able to increase our core deposit and granular deposit. The second, we have somewhere around 800 plus RFL brands, which is called the BC outlets. Today they are doing with 8,000 people on the ground, around 7,500 plus people on the ground. Those people are doing a single product of giving the microfinance advances only, which we wanted to leverage as per the BC model. They are permitted to mobilize deposit, mobilize savings fund account, mobilize this. Maybe that value will be lesser, but the, um, the quantum of mobilization will be much higher. That's the second source. The third source is the digital channel. Today we have, yeah, through the digital channel, we are servicing somewhere around 50 lakh customers whom we have never leveraged beyond what we have been doing it. We are using them through our partnership model and this will be leveraged. We have already established a strong analytics team which has already started publishing or rather doing analytics to find out the exact people who can be reached within this customer base of 50 lakhs in the payment space alone and plus 11 lakhs of all the customers. How many of them can be uh, move to the liability and we have uh, another 4.6 million customers in the credit card. Majority of them are not into the liability space at all. Again, we are leveraging our analytics to see that how many of them will be able to leverage for the purpose of our uh, liability product. So this is how the plan of action which we have. This plan of action is in the various stages of implementation. By end of this year, we will be in a position to uh, complete all the plans what I said and into the implement, implementation. Implementation itself will be completed thereafter the benefits will start accruing to us. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We now conclude the question and answer session. If you have any further questions, please contact RBL Bank Limited via email at ir at rblbank.com. On behalf of RBL Bank Limited, we thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect.